Chapter 7 Fairy Goddaughter Casts a Spell A merman in a gold scaled pattern uniform came flying at him, sending the ball toward the goal, but Carlos blocked it quickly, throwing it back into the melee. Jay caught the ball with his paddle and ran down the field, jumping on shields, dodging every defenseman, and a can and cannonball shots in his path until he successfully sent the ball whizzing into the seaside goal. Yes! But the seaside team quickly recovered. Carlos was still celebrating Jay's score when another merman came barreling toward him, almost certain to score. The ball shot toward the very edge of the goal, and right when it seemed all was lost, Carlos flew up and slammed it went away from the nets. Just as the whistle blew to end the game. Oradon Fighting Knights 3, Seaside Merman 2. It was the final game of the season, and they had just won the championship against the number one seed. Carlos cheered, jumping up in the air and waving his paddle. He pointed at Jay. You, you, cheered Jay, removing his helmet and rushing across the field to thump Carlos in the chest. They laughed and joined their team in a group hug and a sweating... A sweaty huddle of excitement and adrenaline. Then, like the good sports they learned to be, they joined their teammates in counseling, consoling their opponents who were congratulating them. Good game, good game, Carlos said, high-fiving the defeated mermen as they streamed by the Oradon fighting knights. Yo, bomb goalie, call, yelled Herky, a rather large teammate. Huh? What did you call me? asked Carlos. Bomb goalie. You're the goalie, and you're the bomb. Ha, nice one, thanks, said Carlos, pounding his teammates' outstretched fists. Herky enthusiastically tapped him back, sending Carlos flying right into the path of the Oradon mascot. Oof, said a distinctly fe feminine voice from inside the fighting knight costume. Jane, Carlos thought, rushing to see if she was all right. I'm so sorry, he said, helping her stand back up. Jane removed her costume helmet and shook out her hair. Are you okay? asked Carlos. I'm fine, Jane said with a laugh. Risks of being the mascot. Her dark hair was plastered to her cheeks and neck, and she was all sweaty. But Carlos thought she looked sweet. Okay, good, Carlos smiled. When she turned the other way, he surreptitiously smoothed down his shock of white, white hair. He was wearing a comb to the side these days, hoping it made him look look older, more serious, and less like a computer geek. They fell in step together off the field, Jane carrying the helmet under her arm. Good game, she said. Poor Merman. They haven't been having the best week. Did you get caught in the rain too? asked Carlos. Yeah, I went with Lonnie. She, we got drenched, said Jane. It's my favorite of the Oradon celebrations too. They passed Audrey and the cheerleaders, who were squealing and holding their pom-poms while congratulating the team. Jane twirled a lock of her hair around her finger and glanced wistfully at them. I was thinking of trying out for cheers, she said, but that seems silly, right? Why would that be silly, asked Carlos. You should try out if you want to. But I'm just the mascot, said Jane. Mascots aren't cheerleader material. That's not true. Look at me. I never thought I'd make the turning team, he told her, swinging his paddle absently. Really? asked Jane. I thought you and Jay were recruited the minute you got here. Jay was, said Carlos. I was more of an accidental addition. Coach saw me running away from dude and put me on the team. I used to be scared of dogs when I got here. Jane giggled. That's funny. See, if I can do it, you can, he smiled. But you're, like, brave and all, she said. You guys stood up to Maleficent. You could do anything. Carlos tried not to laugh at her assessment, but he had, set, he had to set the record straight. No way, I'm not brave. I was scared the entire time. Ask Jay or Mal or Evie. Jane was surprised. Really? Yeah, I'm scared of a lot of things. I'm also scared of heights and my mom, he shuddered. Aw, oh, come on, everyone's scared of your mom. You got that right. He turned to Jane and smiled. But cheerleaders are definitely not scary. Come on, what do cheerleaders do? I'll help you practice. Aren't tryouts for the new season next week? Jane nodded. Yeah, I was thinking of maybe auditioning. Carlos bounced across the field. Come on, let's practice flips. 
I've seen you do them in the mascot costume. Jane laughed and stepped out of the rest of the costume, leaving the outfit in a pile on the grass. She was wearing a t-shirt and shorts. Okay, let's do it. She did a bunch of cartwheels and backflips, and Carlos taught her how to do a one-hand cartwheel that he'd picked up from roar training. She taught him the Oradon cheer and the routine that went with it. And by the end, they flopped together on the grass, red-faced and out of breath. That was fun, said Jane. You're really good, said Carlos, and he couldn't stop smiling. You think so? she asked shyly. So you'll try out? Yeah, why not, Jane laughed again. She stood up and brushed her knees, her eyes twinkling like stars from her mo mother's wand. Me, a cheerleader. I mean, stranger things have happened, right? Like villain kids going to school in Oregon, said Carlos with a smile. I guess so, she s said Jane. Did you ever think you guys would end up here? He shook his head. Honestly, it's the last thing we expected. It was a total surprise, and we didn't even want to go. He recalled that day so vividly, how their parents had schemed and pressured them into going to Oradon as part of their evil plan. Jane didn't expect to hear that. You didn't? No, I mean, we were raised to believe bad is good, and all we knew was the Isle of the Lost. But our parents were determined to send us here so they could have their revenge. Thank goodness you guys didn't do it, said Jane. Yeah, it's weird. I never thought I'd be over on this side of the barrier. But it feels really natural now, he said, thinking of all the good things in his life. Now that he lived in Oregon, his dog, dude, for one, and his solid gang of friends for another. Even Jane, he thought, if he'd never moved to Oregon, he wouldn't have met her. What do you want to do when you get out of here? Oregon prep, I mean, she asked. As they left the field and walked onto campus, what do I want to do when I grow up? Carlos thought about it. I don't know. Something with computers, maybe. What about you? I always thought I'd be like my mom, said Jane. Headmistress? No, I meant like someone who grants people's wishes. But now that magic is discouraged, I guess I have to go back to the drawing board, said Jane. Which is totally fine. Although I was sort of looking forward to suddenly popping up when people are crying and changing everything so that they get their heart's desire. You like helping people, said Carlos. I guess I do, said Jane. She smiled and blushed, as if she'd revealed too much of herself. Come on, race you back to the dorms. One, two, but before she even said three, Jane was already running, holding her mascot costume in her arms. Carlos yelped and ran to catch up with her, following the sound of her laughter all the way to the buildings. Jane had a sweet, lovely laugh, and hours later, Carlos discovered he was still thinking about it.